Today we're going to be learning how to solve word problems involving decimal fractions. We're going to start off by looking at the process that we need to follow when we solve word problems. The first thing you need to do is read the problem that you've been given very carefully. Make sure that you identify all the important information that you're going to need to use to help you to solve that word problem. And you might find that it's helpful to underline important information as you go so that you can eliminate or ignore the important the information that's not going to be important and that's not going to help you to actually solve the problem and you don't get confused. Right, the next thing you're going to do once you've read it is you need to then write your number sentence that's going to help you to actually solve the word problem. Once you've got your number sentence, you then need to solve that number sentence. You need to work it out. Now, these two steps, the number sentence and the solving, that might need to happen more than once. If you've got a problem that's going to require multiple steps, you might need to write a number sentence and then solve it and write a number, another number sentence and then solve it and so on until you get to your final solution. Once you've got your final solution, you need to then go back and answer the question that you were asked. You need to put the answer back into the context of the question that you were given. So you can't just give a number as your answer. You need to put it back into the context saying if it's 15, then it's 15 apples or it's 15 people or 15 something. Okay, 15 rand or whatever. So you need to make sure that you answer the question that you have been given. Okay, then another thing you need to be aware of is if your question that you're working with is dealing with money, and if there are decimal places, then you need to make sure that you round off to two decimal places. And if you end up with one decimal place, you need to write the second decimal place. You can't just write 14,5 if it's money. You need to write 14 rand 50. Okay, so make sure that you write your money correctly. Okay, so let's have a look at the first example we're going to be doing for today. In this example, we've got Sue and Nandiswa who are both at the shop getting bananas. If Sue buys 0.8 kilograms of bananas for 14 rand 32, how much will Andiswa's bananas cost if she has 1.36 kilograms of bananas in her trolley? Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is we need to look at where we've got a complete set of information. Sue, we've been told how much bananas she's buying, what weight of the bananas she's buying, and we've been told how much it's going to cost her. Okay, so we've got all the information we need about Sue. We can use that to help us to work out how much Andiswa's bananas are going to cost. But first, we need to use Sue's information to help us to work out the cost per kilogram of bananas for helping us to then work out Andiswa's, the cost of Andiswa's bananas. Okay, so let's go and have a look at how we're going to work this out. So, so first of all, we're going to use the information we've been given about Sue and the bananas that she is buying to help us to work out the cost per kilogram of bananas. Okay, so if I'm working out cost per kilogram, remember this per over here, this slash that we've got is actually a fraction line. It is a division sign. So this means the cost divided by the weight. Okay, so cost per kilogram we're going to work out by saying the cost divided by the weight. So the cost in Sue's case is 14 rand 32. And we're going to divide that by the amount or the weight of the bananas that Sue is buying, which is 0 0.8 kilograms. So it's the cost divided by the weight. Okay, so that's going to help us to work out the cost per kilogram. So now, when I work this out, we've already learned how to work out decimal fractions or division for decimal fractions. So first we're going to multiply both of these by 10 so that the dividend or the divisor, sorry, is a whole number. I want this to be a whole number. So I'm going to need to multiply both of them by 10. So that's going to give me 143,2 divided by 8. By multiplying both of these by 10, I move that decimal place over there so that it is not um, a fraction anymore. It's a whole number. So now I've got 143.2 divided by 8. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and divide and work that out. Okay, so 143,2 divided by 8. Now 8 doesn't go into 1. It does go into 14. It goes into 14 once with a remainder of 6. 8 goes into 63. It actually goes into 56 7 times and then I get a remainder of 7. Here's my decimal point over there. And then 8 goes into 72 9 times. So that gives me 17,9. So this will be the, the cost per kilogram. Okay, so our cost per kilogram is 17 rand 90 
per kilogram. Okay, that is the cost of the bananas. Now we're going to use that to help us to work out how much Andiswa's bananas are going to cost. So I'm going to take Andiswa's bananas, which is 1.36 kilograms, and I'm going to multiply it by the cost per kilogram. So that's going to be times 17,9. Now I don't need to write times 17,90 because it doesn't make any difference when I'm doing the actual calculation. It's when I write it like this, where I'm writing money, that's where I had to write that zero in because it's cents. But when I do the calculation, I don't have to worry about that. Okay, so 1.36 times 17.9. So over here, I'm going to, see, I, I'm doing my calculations now on the side. So I'm showing my working out, but I don't need to show it in over here. It's just going to be on the side, showing that that's how I worked it out. Okay, so I've got 1.36. Uh, but remember, when we're doing multiplication with decimals, we don't need to write the, the commas. We're going to work out where those are going to be after. So I've got 136 multiplied by 179. Okay, so first, 9 times 6. 9 times 6 is 54, so I put my 5 over there, my 4 over there. Then 9 times 3 is 27, plus 5 is 32. Then 9 times 1 is 9, plus 3 is 12. Okay, now I'm going to put down a 0 because I'm multiplying by 70. So then I have 7 times 6 is 42. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 4 is 25. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9. Then I put down two zeros because I'm now multiplying by 100. So that's going to be 1 times 6, 1 times 3, and 1 times 1. So now when I add all of this up, I get 4, 4, then 2 plus 5 plus 6 is 13, then 1 plus 1 plus 9 plus 3 is 14, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. So that gives me 24344. Four, four. Okay, so now that I know what I get when I multiply those together, I need to look and see where my decimals are going to be. So I've got over here one, two, three decimal places. So remember, we need to have three decimal places then in our answer. So our decimal point is going to be over here. Okay, so that gives me 24,344. Four. Okay, but now we are working out the cost of Andispa's bananas. Now, cost is going to be in rands, so therefore we have to round that off to two decimal places. So Andispa's bananas cost 24 rand, comma, and now we need to round this off over here. We look at if we're running off to two decimal places, we look at the second decimal place. I need to see what to do to that, so I'll look at the one after it. It is in the four or less bracket, which means that this is going to stay the same. So it's going to be comma three, four. So I have 24 rand 34, and that is how much and these was bananas are going to cost her. Okay, so that's just an idea of a kind of problem you can get when we're doing word problems with decimal fractions. Now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. Here's the first one you're going to do. Sipo cycles to school in the morning. After school, he makes a couple of stops on his way home. The distances he travels are as follows. Home to school is 6.47 kilo, uh, kilometers. School to library is 3.628 kilometers. Library to shop is 1.346 kilometers. And shop to home again is 2.157 kilometers. And we need to work out the total distance that Sipo cycled all together. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work this out.
Okay, so let's go through that and see what you got. So first of all, you have to realize that what you need to do here is you need to add up all the distances that he went to get the total distance. So we've got 6.47 plus 3.628 plus 1.346 plus 2.157. Okay, so once I've got that, that's my number sentence. The next thing I need to do is I need to go and work it out. Okay, so to work it out, we've learned how to do addition with decimal fractions. We need to make sure that we write them underneath each other, keeping the decimal points in line with each other in the same column. So that's 6.5. 4, 7 over here. Then I'm going to have 3.628 underneath it. Then I've got 1.346 and then I've got 2.157. I'm adding all of those up. Okay. So now when I add these, I'm going to start over here. I've got 8 plus 6 plus 14. 8 plus 6 is 8 plus 6 plus 7. 8 plus 6 is 14 plus 7 is 21. Then 2 plus 7 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. 7 plus 2 is also 9. So that's 18 plus 2 is 20. Then I've got 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 3 plus 1. 4 plus 6 is 10. Plus 2 plus 3 plus 1. That's 16. Then I've got my comma. Then here I've got 1 plus 6 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2. This 6 plus 3 plus 1, that is going to be 10, plus 1 plus 2 is 13. So that's 13.601. So that is the total distance. So now I can say over here, 13,601. So now I've worked it out. So that was my number sentence. Now I've solved my number sentence. Now I need to go and answer the question. So therefore, um, CPOR cycled 13,601 kilometers. And that's what you should have got for that question. Right, question two. The teacher spends time on a particular day doing different activities as follows. 7.5 hours she spends sleeping. She spends 1.4 hours traveling, 9.95 hours on schoolwork, 2.1 hours doing sports, 2.25 hours preparing food and eating. She watches TV for the rest of the day. How much time in minutes does Latita spend watching TV? Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work this out.
Okay, so let's go through that and see how you did. So first of all, you need to add it up all you needed to add up all the times that you spent doing everything else besides watching TV. So we've got 7.5 plus 1.4 plus 9.95 plus 2.1 plus 2.25. Okay, so now let's work that out. Okay, and we're going to add all of those up. Right, so first, 5 plus 5 is 10. Then I've got 1 plus 5 plus 4, that's 10. 9 plus 1 is also 10, so that's 20. Plus 2 is 22. Then I've got my comma. Then 2 plus 7 plus 1 is 10. Plus 9 is 19. Plus 2 plus 2 is 23. So you should have got 23.20 for that, or just 23.2. Okay, so now we know this is how much time she spends not watching TV. So now let's work out how much time she spends watching TV. So in order to work that out, you need to know that an hour or that a day is a total of 24 hours. So it's going to be 24 minus 23.2. Okay, so actually I'm going to do that over here. So it's so I have enough space next to it to do the, the calculation. 24 minus 23.2. Okay, so I've got over here 24 minus 23,2. Okay, now remember when we're doing subtraction, if I've got nothing above a particular digit that I need to subtract, I'm going to put in a zero there. So I've got comma zero, so that I can borrow and put what I borrowed on there. So I'm going to have over here the four, I'm going to borrow from the four, giving me three over there. Then I put the one over there, that's 10. So 10 minus two is eight. Then I've got comma, three minus three is nothing. And two minus two is also nothing. So that gives me 0 0.8. Okay, so now I know that she spends 0 0.8 hours watching TV. Over here, this was 23.2 hours not watching TV. Okay, so now I know how much time she does watch TV, but I'm not done yet because remember, we were told to work this out and give the answer in minutes. So now I need to convert the, zero, the 0 0.8 to minutes. So what I need to do is I need to know, first of all, that the number of minutes in an hour is 60. To work out the total number of minutes that this is, I need to take 0 0.8 and multiply it by the number of minutes per hour. Okay, so 0 0.8 times 60. Okay, so now when we work this out, remember we're going to take each of these, we're going to use the non-decimal part of it. So over here, I'm going to take the 8, I'm going to ignore the point, the 0 and the point and everything, just take the 8. Over here, I can't ignore the 6. If I ignore this, I mean the 0. If I ignore the 0, I'm going to have a problem. I have to take the whole of the 60. Okay, because this isn't decimal over here. I have to take the whole 60. So it's going to be 60 times 8, right? 6 or 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 6 is 48. Okay, so that's 480. But now, if you look over here, I've got one decimal place, which means that my comma is going to go over there with one decimal place. So that's going to be... 48, okay, comma zero, but I don't need to write this, the comma zero. So therefore, uh, Latita spends 48 minutes watching TV. Okay, and that's what you should have got for that question. Right, now let's go on to the last question for today. Michael took 1.2 hours to drive 98.82 kilometers. The first thing we need to work out is his average speed for question A. And then for question B, if he maintains the same speed, how far would he travel in 2.7 hours? So I'm going to give you one minute first to work out his average speed. Okay, so one minute just to do question A at the moment.
Okay, so let's see what you got for question A. So first, you need to know that when you're working out the average speed, it's going to be in kilometers per hour. Now remember, just like what we had when we had that banana question, the per over here, that is a divide sign. It's a division line, okay? A fraction. So now we've got kilometers divided by hours. It's distance divided by time, distance over time. So now, to work out his average speed, we're going to take the distance that he went, which is 98.82, so this is question A, 98.82, we're dividing that by the time that he spent driving, which is 1.2 hours. Okay, so now remember, when we're doing division with decimal fractions, we need to multiply both the dividend and the divisor by a power of 10, so that the divisor will be a whole number. So I need to multiply both of these by 10 so that this is going to be a whole number um, 12. So that's going to be 988,2 divided by 12. Okay, so now that is what I'm actually going to be dividing. Okay, so first 12 doesn't go into 9 obviously. 12 does go into 98. 12 actually goes into 96 eight times with a remainder of 2 over there. Then 12 goes into 28. It goes into 24 twice, and that gives us a remainder of 4. Then 12 goes into 42. It goes into 36 three times, and that leaves us with a remainder of 6. Remember, we have to put our extra 0 over there so that we have something to attach our remainder to. So then I've got 60. So 12 goes into 60 five times. So that gives me 82.35. So that's what we should have got for the speed. Okay. So that gives us 82.35. So his average speed was 82.35 kilometers per hour. Now you need to go and do question B. Question B is if he maintains the same speed, so we've just worked out the speed, if he maintains that speed, so his speed is 82.35 kilometers per hour, how far would he travel in 2.7 hours? So now we've been given the, dis the time and we need to work out the distance he will go at the speed that we just worked out. Okay, I'm going to give you one minute to work that out. Okay, so let's go through that question. So to work out the total distance that he would be able to go, we need to take the speed, which is 82.35, and multiply it by the time that he's traveling because the speed is telling us how far he will go in one hour. So if we know how many hours he's driving for, we need to multiply the speed by the time. So it's going to be 82.35, multiplied by the time that he's driving, which is 2.7 hours. Okay, so now to work that out, remember we're going to multiply those together, but not worrying about our decimals. So it's going to be 8, 2, 3, 5, multiplied by 27. Okay. So first, 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 3 is 24. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 2 is 16. 
7 times 8 is 56, plus 1 is 57. Then I'm going to put down a 0 because I'm multiplying by 2. Then I've got 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 2 times 4 is 4, and 2 times 8 is 16. And now I'm going to add those together to get my total. So I've got 5 plus nothing is 5, 4 plus nothing is 4, 6 plus 7 is 13, 1 plus 7 plus 4 is 12, 1 plus 5 plus 6 is 12, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So that's 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, now I need to work out where my decimal point is going to be. So if I look over here, I've got 1, 2, 3 decimal places. So my decimal comma is going to be over here. So I've got 222, 222, comma, 345. So that's what we should get over there. So now the answer to our question is, if he maintains the same speed, how far will he drive, or how far will he travel in 2.7 hours? So therefore, he will travel 222,345 kilometers. And that's what you should have got for that question. And that's how we solve word problems involving decimal fractions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.